and we can choose from a wide buffet of YOLO models. So I'm going to change to say YOLO V7 Tiny Onyx, erase that, paste the new model in, save it. Now we can run it again on the same video and let's see what happens. Check that out, it's running. Now because we are using YOLO V7 Tiny, you can see that the performance is not that great. But that's all part of the fun because we can test out different models. So I can go and cancel this and test out a more accurate version of YOLO V7. I'm going to show you how to run YOLO V7 in under 20 lines of code. And the way we're going to do this is by using the AS1 library, which is a brand new library from Augmented Startups, which is free and open source. So have a look at this, right? AS1, a modular library for YOLO object detection and tracking. So what's really cool about this library is that you can mix and match various versions of YOLO with different types of object trackers. Like I can take YOLO v6 and mix it with ByteTrack or YOLO v7 and mix it with DeepSort. Is this sinking in for you right now? How cool is this? So in order to get started with AS1, what you need to do is to ensure that you have all of the prerequisites for this. If you're running this on GPU, you would obviously need a CUDA supported NVIDIA GPU. And on Windows, you'd require MS Build Tools as well as Git for Windows. Cool, so if you have all of the prerequisites, you can now go ahead and clone the repository. So open up a fresh terminal, find a nice folder where you can clone your repository to. So we're just gonna copy this and change directory to this. Right, so we've got our AS1 folder over there and we're going to git clone AS1. Next, we're going to change directory into that folder. So you can say CD into AS1 and if you open up this, you'll see all of the files required for AS1 to run. Now, right off the bat, you won't see any version of YOLO because the magic will happen a bit later. So let's get into the installation. So right now we have installation instructions for Linux and Windows. Now because we're running this on Windows, we'll follow the Windows instructions, of course. Hopefully at the later stage, we'll have support for Mac on M1 and M2 silicone. But for now, we're just gonna copy this command over here, which will create a nice virtual environment for AS1. So this is python-m vnv, and we're gonna call our environment.env. You'll see that it'll create a little folder over there for our virtual environment. And once that is done, we can activate our environment. So far, if you have done everything correctly, you'll see this in brackets, our virtual environment has been activated and now we can install Scython. So I'm going to copy this and paste it right over here and wait for Scython to install. Now, if you're getting this warning over here, don't worry, because it just means that we need to upgrade our pub library. So we're just going to copy this, paste it over here, and let's run it to upgrade pub. Cool. Now that is done, we don't have to worry about any more warnings from there. We're just going to take this command over here to install Scython pbox, and let's run it. Brilliant. Next, we're going to install the magic library known as AS1 or Augmented Startups 1. So this is on Papai already. So we're going to say pup install AS1. Great. This may take a while depending on the performance of your system. But overall, this will install all of the necessary libraries that we need for AS1 to run. Now, while this is installing, let's draw our attention to the installation of Torch Vision. Now, if you're running this on CPU, then you'd need to install this command over here. And then if you want to run this on a GPU, then you'd use either this command or this command. I'm going to try out this one here uh, because I had better success with it. We'll obviously optimize this in future, but let's just copy this while we're waiting for AS1 library to complete. Great. Now that our AS1 library has been installed, we can install our Torch and Torch Vision. So this may take some time also, maybe one to two minutes. Cool, so PyTorch has been installed with Torch Vision and all of the other things that Torch requires. Now we can get to the fun part, which is running YOLO v7. Now we can go to section five and we can run this on a GPU. So we're going to say Python main.py data sample videos, which is stored over here. This is where our sample video is. So this is test.mp4, you can see that 
we can see a bunch of cars driving past and we have another video over here which is a whole bunch of people also walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, here. I'm walking here. so back to the command we're going to say python main.py data sample videos test.mp4 we're going to hit enter and let's see if it runs so as you can see it's downloading all of the files required to run yolo x now i know that they promised you yolo v7 now i'm going to show you that in just a bit let's open up main.py and just look at the code right if we ignore all of the arguments we can see that this runs in just under 20 lines of code especially if we just move this back up there hide that there cool and there you see yolo x running in real time on gpu and it looks great now this is not only yolo x it's yolo x plus a tracker and the tracker that we are using is PyTrack. Now what happens if we don't want to use YOLO X and we instead want to use YOLO V7? Well, what we do is we'd head over to the section here called Benchmarks and we can choose from a wide buffet of YOLO models. So I'm gonna change to say YOLO V7 Tiny Onyx. So I'm gonna take this and erase that, paste the new model in and save it. Now we can run it again on the same video and let's see what happens. Check that out, it's running. Now because we are using YOLO V7 Tiny, you can see that the performance is not that great. But that's all part of the fun because we can test out different models. So I can go and cancel this and test out a more accurate version of YOLO V7. So copying this, I can take this thing out, delete that, paste that in, save it and run it again. So as you can see, it's downloading the model of the YOLO V7 E6E, which is the Onyx version. You can get a sense of how fast each model runs in this page on all of the benchmarks. For example, if you want a relatively fast YOLO V7 model, you can run YOLO V7 Tiny at 41 frames per second, depending if you have this configuration over here. Or if you want something a bit more accurate, you can choose that. Otherwise, you can switch between YOLO V6 you'll have 5 and we'll have much more models in the future. So this is almost downloaded. Let's wait for it to prop up. And as you can see, we have YOLO V7 running in real time on GPU with minimal effort to change between YOLO V7, Tiny, YOLO V6, YOLO X and beyond. And let me show you something else which is really cool. So I'm going to stop this right over here and I'm going to put in and say um, we're going to go to draw trails so draw underscore trails and set it to true let's try it on a different video so instead of test.mp4 we're going to try it on video 2.mp4 we are going to use let's try yolo v5 okay so let's go to this this one seems pretty fast so i'm going to copy that and paste it over here Now we will optimize this library to make it so that you can run everything from the command line instead of uh, in here, but this is just to demonstrate a point. So I'm going to run this. It is downloading the YOLO v5 model. And that was quite quick. Hmm. I'm impressed. Are you not impressed? Look at that. We have YOLO v5 running in real time with tracking trails. And if you need to access any of the parameters, you can access it right over here. You get the bounding box details of all of the objects that have, that have been tracked. So this will give you the bounding boxes of all of the trails, the IDs, the scores, the class IDs, the frame, the frame number, the frames per second as well. As you can see, we're tapping into that right over there. And we can also print out the frame number, which we are currently doing right here. So that is it. Let me know what you think. I really want you to head over to the AS1 repository on GitHub and to play around with this. Try it out with YOLO v6, v5, v7, YOLO r, YOLO x and test out with also the other trackers like DeepSort, PyTrack, Norfair. This is just a start and we plan to add on much more trackers and object detectors. So eventually when YOLO v8 gets released, guess what? We're gonna add it onto this library. When it comes to trackers, we definitely want to add on StrongSort and a few other trackers. You can let us know in the comments down below which trackers you'd want us to implement and run. 
So that is AS1. Hop onto the repository, test it out, and let me know your thoughts. And let's build the Swiss Army knife of computer vision. Otherwise, if you want to delve into computer vision and get your hands dirty with our courses and projects, you can check it out at these links over here, where you can see that we have courses in YOLO v7, object tracking, UNet, segmentation, generative adversarial networks, self-driving cars, and we have a whole bunch of projects on our project store, which will eventually become AS1 compatible, which means that you can run car velocity calculation and traffic in maybe under 30 lines of code. Wouldn't that be cool? Or maybe you'd want to run a project called automatic number plate recognition in maybe 15 lines of code. It's possible. You never know. But I'll definitely keep you updated with that. And with that said, if you want to become an expert in computer vision, check this link right up here.